ventricular rhythms. Okay, so in message three, you're going to learn algorithms and how to put it all together. All right, but that's not our job here. Our job here for this course is just to know what are the causes, what are the symptoms, what are the treatments, and the complications. And of course, nurse interventions that I might do for these patients. All right. So we have VT, which has uh, two varieties, monomorphic and polymorphic. And polymorphic has another name. What's another name from polymorphic VT? That is torsades. Okay. We've kind of touched on torsades a couple of times, but we're going to have a slide dedicated to that, right? And then we have asisly and PEA. So these are all ventricular rhythms. These are rhythms that are the ventricles not working good, all right? So it, it might be working too fast, right? And that uh, fastness is coming from the ventricles itself. The FTP the, is, has gone haywire. There's been a little source here in the, the heart, and it's, it's the one that's causing an overriding the underlying rhythm. So they have a ventricular tachycardia. It could be a reason. You get a polymorphic ventricular tachycardia coming from different part, parts of the ventricle, more than one. Okay. And then V-fib, that's just like A-fib, but it's not the H of the fibrillating, it's the ventricles that are fibrillating. Which one's worse? V-fib, right? The ventricles are fibrillating, they're not ejecting the blood, which is 80% of your cardiac output, right? So you're, not, you're missing a lot of that cardiac output, all right? And then we have asisly, which is no ventricular activity at all, right? We have a flat line. You might have a little bit of P waves in there, a little agonal breath, uh, not breaths, but agonal beats, but basically we have a flat line, right? And that's a... Um, that's called a systole, or without a systole contraction, right? And then we have PEA, pulseless electroactivity. That's where they have you put on the monitor, they have an EKG, but you feel the pulse and there's nothing, right? So why would that happen? Why would that even? How is it even possible? Well, if your heart is a, a wash or it's a wash, a wash of potassium, there's potassium all throughout your heart. That if you have too much potassium, it makes you super bradycardic, and then you, your light switch cannot turn on anymore, right? Hyperpolarizes to the point where you can't reach thresholds, okay? And then that's going to, so the heart muscle itself cannot contract. You might see some electric activity trying to contract it, but it's not going to be able to, okay? So there's, a, there's important causes for these ones. The nice thing about these, the causes are all the same, right? Yes, the S and S is there, but there's what we call what are the H's and T's. And H's and T's are the causes for all lethal rhythms. So you all, and the reason why that's important is because H's and T's are reversible. We can fix it right then and there to try to get them out of these rhythms. Okay. So we do our a table here. H's and T's are the causes for ventricular rhythms, right? And of course, for torsades, we have extra other little things we've, we've talked about throughout today. And then for uh, what else? For for the treatment. The treatment is you might shock the, the lethal rhythm or you don't shock, right? So that's differentiating what the treatment is for each one of these ventricular rhythms. All right, so VT. So ventricular tachycardia, notice it's a wide complex because it came from the ventricles, right? And so well, it could come from the atria and it could be a bundle branch block also, but whenever you have a fast, wide rhythm, you always assume it's VTAP and typically otherwise, okay? And again, I'm not gonna fool you on the test and give you an SVT with a bundle branch block, all right? So we have monomorphic VT, and we have, which it means is just, just regular VT, like at the top of the screen there, or we have polymorphic VT. But notice there's a third one here, because when you have VT, you can have a pulse or you can have no pulse, right? And there's a difference between the two. One, you're, you're going to shock them both, but one, you want to synchronize it because they have a pulse, and one, you want to just shock them because they're dead, they have no pulse, right? So which one do you shock just willy-nilly? You don't really have to worry about synchronize or, or whatnot. Have no pulse. If they have no pulse, you're going to do unsynchronized cardioversion, right? And also polymorph VT usually does not have a pulse. Sometimes it might go into it just briefly, but if it's sustained, they have no pulse. You've got to shock them out of it immediately, right? Same, what's another lethal rhythm that have to, you have to shock them right away in the previous slide? Unsynchronized like? It's V-fib. V-fib, you just shock all of us, you know, no matter what. V-fib, they have no pulse guaranteed, okay? Unless they're off the monitor. Please don't shock your patient off the monitor, okay? So here's VT right here. And see, they lost a pulse there. They're going to, you know, now, oh, sorry, they shocked them. And now they're back into a sinus rhythm or sinus tack even, all right? So they're VTAC, and there they shocked them, a little big white little complex right there. And then now they're back into a regular rhythm. And that's the goal. If they have a pulse, you hit the what button? 
the sync button to provide synchronized cardio version. Why is the voltage low right after they shock them? Well, nowadays we have better machines that, are, that you can do a lower voltage with. Usually it starts like at 120 volts. So that's a, you can, joules actually, so you can do a lower, lower threshold. Back in the day, like 20 years ago, you had to, you started all the way up to 360. And you could use paddles to, or like in the movies. Nowadays, you just slap the pads on them, and you can use lower joules. Okay. So the causes of all of our ventricular rhythms are H's and T's, right? So H's and T's are reversible causes of these lethal rhythms. So instead of, before we did always ABCs, now you're going to switch gears if they lose a pulse. If they lose a pulse, we're not worried about airway breathing anymore. It's like, why are we not worried about that? Because you're worried about circulation, which is CPR, right? So the priority for these patients is CPR if they lose a pulse. Okay. So what else? So what causes this is H's and T's, and usually there is something abnormal with the tissue. <coughs> there might be scar tissue. They might have ischemia, like an MI. They might have a um, something like a really you know some electrolyte issues usually are torsades, but it's not unheard of that that could cause VTAC as well. Just like when you have like hypokalemia, you're very very irritable. You could go into VTAC, right? So the features of VTAC, it's always wide, and you have what's called AV dissociation. So that's where P waves and QRSs are doing their own thing. It really has to be slow enough for you to be able to see that. Lethal VTAC is really, really fast. Okay. So also PVCs, what's a PVC again? That's a premature ventricular contraction. When you have three or more of those in a row, that's called technically VTAC. That's concerning when there's three or more in a row, and we have to intervene. Okay, and again, there's types. There's monomorphic, which is which can, which can have a pulse or no pulse, right? And then you have torsades, which is our next slide. So torsades is there's many causes of torsades, but they usually don't have a pulse with torsades, and we have to fix that. Okay, so a patient will be symptomatic with VTAC, right? Even with VTAC with a pulse, they're going to be really sick. They're going to have what symptoms? Yeah, chest pain, shortness of breath, hypotension, confusion, any one of those things they can have with VTAC, with a pulse, right? They're not going to be sustaining for long. They might transition to VTAC without a pulse. Okay, so the fix for VTAC with a pulse, if they have a blood pressure greater than 90, we can hit them up with amiodarone. Why can't we do digoxin? Doesn't digoxin protect cardias? Because the joxin and beta blockers and those guys all work on the AV node. We don't have an we don't have an atrial problem. We have a ventricular problem. Our ventricle is going haywire. If we give the joxin and suppress the AV node, it does nothing, right? The problem is the ventricles. So we got to do something that's going to block all the cells, and that's what amiodarone does. It's a potassium channel blocker. It's going to prolong the refractory period so that less impulses get through and lowers the heart rate and hopefully gets them out of the, the VTAC. Okay, so that's with a pulse. If you have a pulse and you have good blood pressure, you can give amiodarone to hopefully fix it. But what if the blood pressure is less than that? You can give amiodarone? No, that's a contraindication. You don't give a medication that's going to lower the blood pressure to someone that has low blood pressure, right? So in that case, you have to do, you have to shock them out of the rhythm, and that's called synchronized cardioversion. And then we have pulseless VTAC. You have VTAC on the monitor, you have this wide complex tachycardia here. And what do you do then? You have to chain gears. We're not doing ABCs anymore. We're not worried about airway breathing circulation. We're worried only about circulation, right? So the whole, whole purpose of here is to maintain circulation. How do you maintain circulation? It's CPR, right? And we try to reboot the heart with epinephrine, right? Epinephrine is going to supercharge the heart, right? To try to get them out of that VTAC. All right, it's like, well, isn't tachycardia, wouldn't epinephrine cause tachycardia? It's like, you know, you're already dead, so why not just try epinephrine and see if it works, right? And it might even be kind of phased out in the future because it it's actually causes more problems than good. But the, the fix for this is CPR and epi. If someone has no pulse and they have VTAC, they're really dead in front of you, the, the priority for the nurse is to do CPR. That's why you're all BLS trained, right? Is to make sure that someone loses a pulse in front of you, I got to be doing CPR, right? And then now the next step is like, well, do I shock them or not shock them? That's what we're learning now because you've got to throw them on a monitor and see what the EKG is, right? In the mall, you just have the, um, what's it called? Not the ZOL, the, um, the AED. And the AED does its own interpretations. It's interpreting, do they have a or do they have VTAC? 
because VTAC it says shock advised, right? If there's asystole, it's not going to shock because they resume compressions, right? So the priority is CPR, epi, and you can hit the most and the too because you know they have VTAC, okay? And if, as fast as possible, you have to do unsynchronized cardioversion. Why don't you do synchronized cardioversion? Because they're already dead. We don't care if we, we shock them on the T wave or not. We are just going to shock them, and hopefully it reboots the heart. Okay? So you can see there in the middle there, you got this VTAC up there, right? That VTAC's really pronounced, and then it's going. We're going to shock them as soon as possible, right? Still going, still getting the pads in place. I guess that's just VTAC. Okay. Oh, that, that we shocked them at the beginning there. All right, anyways, the goal is to shock them as soon as possible, but maybe you don't have an AED. The priority is to do BLS and CPR, and you go get the AED, right? And then they bring it there, and then hopefully they can shock them out of that rhythm. Okay? So H's and T's are reversible things. So these are all kinds of, of uh, what's it word? Of, uh, sequelae of S and S, or that's a bad adjective. But you have these are all uh, really, really severe S and S things, right? You have really, really severe hypoxia. That's, that triggers the SNS, right? So we can try to fix that hypoxia. Maybe they have a really, really bad pneumonia or COVID-19 or something, right? Hypovolemia, they're bleeding out everywhere. We can try to fix that by restoring blood and, and fluids. Hydrogen ion excess, we're going to talk about next time with ABGs. And if they have really, really high acid levels, that can cause VTAC. It can also cause some of our other lethal rhythms too. Hypokalemia or hyperkalemia, both of them are very, very, when they're very severe, it can cause VTAC or, or other lethal rhythms as well. Hypothermia, we're not going to really touch base too much on that, but uh, tamponade, that's a, also some kind of more trauma. But toxins, you've got a prolonged QT, you've got too many what kind of medications? Too many what? Antiemetics. Too many antiemetics, too much reglin, too much metoclopramide, too much a medication that's going to coin, prolong the QT or too much amiodarone, all right? And then we got uh, tension pneumothorax, which is just a pneumothorax that's pushing and suppressing the blood pressure. And then thrombosis, we got a PE because they have a large, they have atrial fib that wasn't getting what kind of medication? Anticoagulants, right? And then a MI. So if they have an MI in front of you, the priority is to try to open up that coronary vessel with a cardiologist, right? But our priority in the meantime is to do CPR and you know, let the doctor know oh, they're, they're here for an MI. So, well, shoot, that might be the reversible cause. We can try to fix it at the bedside or bring them to the cath lab to fix it. All right, so that's the idea behind VTAC. And the priority is to do a pulse. Very good. Do CPR. Okay. Um, uh, we want nice, steady compression. <laughs> Look at Trap. That CPR that'll save a life. Oh, oh thanks. You know, I used to be a lifeguard. <laughs> <laughs> What did you do? I don't know! You were too good at CPR! He saved my life. How could I ever repay you? You saved me! You saved me! No, Maria! Why didn't you save her? I tried! You have to have steady compression speed! Somebody help me! I don't have any arms! What's happening? Oh. oh my god! What did you do? Trap no! Alright, CPR is priority. Alright, so polymorphic VT. So polymorphic VT is torsades, right? We present pronounce torsades de point correctly. That's where you have, you know, down there in the bottom left, that's what you look like, right? You grab, grab your cape, grab your, your cane, right? So it means turn to the points in uh, French. So if you, this is the point right here, you're just going up and down, right? So that's the idea behind torso. It looks like VTAC, but it gets bigger and smaller, bigger and smaller, right? And what caused it? We've mentioned some of these things. We have a prolonged QT, prolonged QTC, right? And if that's prolonged, that can lead to torsades. And that's a um, that, that's of course deadly and lethal. They're going to lose their pulse, and we have to again do CV. You know what? We're doing compressions first, okay? And then uh, what else causes torsades? We have a low um, electrolytes. What electrolytes are low? We got potassium, we got mag, calcium. Those when those are low, that can cause torsades. Uh, we have a um, 
RNT phenomenon we talked about. We have a PVC that's right on top of the um, QRS complex, right? The PVC right in this area right here. I think someone had a PVC to pr precede it. But all those things can put you at risk for Dursad. So the fix is to do compressions. We're not doing ABCs anymore. We're not worried about pr providing oxygen. We're worried, our worries provide CPR and epi as soon as possible, right? And we got to fix the underlying cause. It's, it could be H's and T's, but really it might be, you know, it might be magnesium being low. So sometimes we just give magnesium just in case, right? You might give epi, or you would give epi if you have no pulse, but then amiodarone. But wait, doesn't that prolong the QT? So <laughs> you have to figure out what the cause is. We're not give more amiodarone if amiodarone caused a prolonged QT. We have other options, okay? So we've got to stop QTC prolonging drugs so it doesn't happen again. So what's a prolonged QTC look like? Greater than what? Greater than 0.45, right? So here's actually a PVC. That's what the RNT phenomenon. We have a PVC right on top of the T wave. All right, so VF, ventricular fibrillation. So whenever you have V-fib, you have to D-fib, right? So we shocked, we shocked three out of five of our lethal rhythms. So those three are VTAC, torsades, and VFib. You do not shock the other two. What are the other two? Lethal rhythms, asystole, and PEA. So VFib is fibrillatory fibrillation of the ventricles, right? The ventricles are fibrillated. They're not pumping out blood. And the cause, just like VTAC, is H's and T's. And we have to fix that, right? They, they will not have a pulse with VFib, guaranteed, right? So it's just CPR and epi, CPR and epi. And CPR and epi is the answer for every patient has no pulse, right? No pulse, CPR and epi. That is the fix, right? Someone starts CPR, you give epinephrine, right? That is the priority. And to shock them or not to shock them depends on what their rhythm is. Is ready to connect. Okay. Let's connect you then. All right, so VFib priority is to DFib. All right, we're still recording there. All right, sorry, some technical difficulties. All right, any other questions on VFib or VTAC? Yes. What are H and T's? H and T's were on the VTAC slide. Those are in that bottom right corner, the, purple, the orange and blue. So H and T's are hypoxia. What's another T? Tamponade. Tamponade. You got thrombus. You got uh, hypothermia. So let's see what's happening. Here. There we go. All right. So the priority here is to defibrillate as soon as possible. Where's my cursor at? Yeah. All right, so VFib for DFib. And uh, they don't have a pulse with this in this situation. That rhythm looks sus. Code blue, I see you. Okay, fam, what's the T? 64-year-old simping for Jesus. Bill, those compressions are dank. Not me saving a life while manifesting sinus rhythm. Vibe check. Tell me you need shock without telling me you need shock. Big yikes. Squiggly lines. Find a shock. This ain't it, chief. Everybody ghost. Full send. Hey, you're done. Ratio. Right, so Big L. That's he didn't an understand the assignment. Code blue. He's canceled. All right, so we talked about cardioversion. This, this is a summarizes cardioversion. What is synchronized versus unsynchronized? So synchronized is the patient has a pulse or no pulse? They have a pulse and they have a fast heart rate, right? <clears throat> and then unsynchronized is where they have a, um, they have no pulse. We're just gonna shock them no, no matter what. And the job of the nurse is to make sure we hit the sync button or not hit the sync button. Also the job of the nurse is to make sure everything's clear so nobody else gets shocked, right? So you have to make sure you shout all clear. Otherwise, you're going to have a problem. They're going to have an arrhythmia of their own, right? You might shock them on the T wave and cause what? Torsades, right? 
So yeah, say I'm clear, you're clear, and then these little markers are going to be there when you have synchronized or unsynchronized card diversion. When you care about the, the shock at the right time is with synchronized card diversion. Okay. If they volunteer for this, they should be getting sedation and consent, right? Because it's going to hurt. All right, so we're going to work through the, the problems and finish up um, the AB blocks here. So usually I'll, I'll usually separate you on the groups, but we'll go ahead and do the problems together. All right, so the last two things that we don't shop, these are lethal, right? Asystole, no heart rate is lethal, right? So you have, a, you have nothing to do but do CPR and F. That's the only thing we can do. We're not going to shock it. It has no, no effect, right? You'll see in movies, they'll shock all the time, but they have to have something that's shockable to be able to, to bring them back from. Okay? You might have a little algorithm before this where they have some kind of activity, but it will eventually lead to a flat line, like there on the, on the right hand side. Right? So the cause is the same for all these really just H's and T's. You try to fix something that might be broke, right? And then I uh, check the patient. They might just be off the leads. They might also do CPR on someone who's just sleeping, right? <laughs> the leads came off. But if they are unresponsive, just like your BLS, it's like, are you okay? Are you okay? No, it's like you have to hit the code blue button. Otherwise, you'd be doing their you're doing compressions. But like, oh, where's somebody at? Right? So hit the code blue button is our priority. And then we do uh, CPR and epi and thoughts and prayers. There's nothing else we can do for ACEs. Right? If they get our pulse back, great. Right? And then PEA is just as bad. Right? It's PEA, you're not going to shock as well, or you're not doing any kind of cardioversion. Causes are the same, the treatment's the same, it's CPR and epi and thoughts and prayers. There's nothing you can do for that. You have to try to reverse it as much as possible. I've been looking to see do they have hypoxia? Are they cold? Is there, what's their potassium level? All right, you can look at those things and try to fix the underlying problem. Otherwise, they, that's, that's it. All right, if they do get return of spontaneous circulation or ROSC, then we're going to do uh, what's called TTM, targeted temperature management. Where you are protecting the brain for as much as possible, as much as possible in the next three days. Right? We used to cool them, which was called therapeutic hypothermia, but now we found out that it kills more patients than good. So we don't do that anymore. So it's just a just maintain the temperature so they don't get fevers, they don't get cold and such. Okay. And also, if you are doing a code for more than 20 minutes, you're doing someone's you're doing a CPR for more than 20 minutes, there is it's futile. So oftentimes it's still, you know. Keep going, keep going 30 minutes, 40 minutes, 50 minutes. Right? In reality, we might do that with someone that's really young, but you know, usually after 20 minutes, there's no, no good outcome. Okay. And then PEA, pulse electroactivity. Again, that's uh, there's something on the screen, there's some on the EKG, but they have no pulse, right? So really it could be any rhythm, except for our legal rhythms, basically. Right? If we have asystole, yes, that's P, that's not really electroactivity. But if they have V fib, VTAC. That is electro activity, and that's, we can do something different for that, right? Otherwise, everything else is PEA. All right, so let's do number one together. So what is that? So you have to recognize lethal rhythms. That is, that is critical as a new nurse, right? You have to be able to say, is that lethal? Yes. What do I do about it? I'm going to do CPR and EPI for every lethal rhythm, and then you know, then you have to say, well, do you have to shock or not shock it? That's the treatment. Okay. So one is VTAC, right? Number two, what is that? That is unorganized, there's no QRSs, that is V what? V fit. Next one. So we got a really wide complex and it's tacked part, right? You measure from complex to complex, it's more than what? Almost 200, right? So that is a wide complex tacked part, which is VTAC, it's a proven otherwise, right? Plot number four. How colors of sods because they're twisting? That is definitely there's fibrillation there, but it's not fibrillation between the QRS complexes. It is yeah. it is VF ventricular fibrillation. Okay, and then what's the top right? Asystole. I mean, it looks like there's some activity there, so they might shock that. And I say it's always fine VFib. But uh, it's likely asystole. All right. Next one, number six. And again, on the test, it'll be very, very clear if it's VVIB or asystole. It's not going to be one or the other. So this looks a little bit like torsades, right? 
and see what I put there. And also, we had, yeah, we had a PVC right on top of that T wave, right? And then next one, number seven. We got a wide complex for sure, right? And is it fast? There's 300, 150, 160 or so. So that is a fast ventricular tachycardia. So it's a VT until, until proven otherwise. How do you prove it? A 12 lead and a cardiologist will help you out, all right? What's number eight? Also, yeah, this, if these were PVCs, you got more than three in a row, that is also a uh, VT. So this is also, whoa, we're twisting of the points. That's called torsades. What about this one down here? We'll kind of skip that one. That's a little more advanced. But there are other clues to see if it's VTAC. All right? So these are examples of medical dramas here. <laughs> All right, VFib is not normal. All right, so let's skip that one. All right, number 10, what is that? So yeah, this part definitely is asystole. Sometimes I mentioned that it can be preceded by one little big last hurrah. All right, number 11, what is that? It's definitely torsade, so it's VTAC. It's getting smaller and bigger. Next one is... Wide complex tachycardia, so it's VTAC until proven otherwise. Right? There's other clues in there too. There's some AV dissociation, which we're not going to get into. All right, so then next one also, you can see these little P waves are on top of the, like, doing their own thing. We mentioned when they're doing their own thing, they're divorced like that, it could be VTAC. Right? And that, that's an example of VTAC. All right, top right, what's that? Number 14. That's pretty much asystole. And number 15, what is that? So it says no pulse with this EKG. So on a test, we have to tell you if there's a pulse or not. If there's no pulse and there's an EKG rhythm, it is likely PEA. What's the exception? Is if it's another lethal rhythm, such as VFib, VTAC, or torsades, that you know, it will tell you if they have, that, that is something you can identify. But if it's anything else, then it's, and they have an electrical activity, but no pulse, then it's called PEA. All right, next one. That is torsades. It says no pulse is EKG. That's like a hack. All right, that's that's that's, gonna, that's telling you that it is likely what PEA. You have electroactivity. You might start trying to interpret it to say, oh, that's you know, it looks like a, I don't know what that is, but that is going to be. There's no pulse with it, so it's a PEA. Next one. That is definitely VTAC. It's not a turn of the points, but it is VTAC. Charging. So there's VTAC there, they're charging. What do you do for VTAC and VFib? You shock them as soon as possible. If they have a blood pressure, you do what? Synchronize cardioversion. If they have no blood pressure, you just shock them. We don't, we don't care. Right? They shock them, they went back into a narrow complex there. Right? Yes. For the purposes, yes. On 13, with it having the synchronized on, would you assume that they have a pulse? Yeah, you could. Yeah, but yeah, I would make it very clear if they have a pulse or no pulse. All right. All right, and then we added some more examples here. What's the top left one there, number 19? That is VTAC. All right, so it's wide complex, and it's really, really fast. And this one can start to make sense. They, it's kind of getting smaller and bigger. Small. It's VTAC. You can see here it's the same. It's just all we're doing is squeezing it down and making it bigger. What about number 21? So go cool, with sinus rhythm with ST elevation, it, but it's also no pulse. So that's called pulseless electrical activity. Okay. And then bottom left, number 22. That is asystole. You could argue maybe it's fine VFib, but it's we're probably done. All right, number 23. That is definitely irregular. That is VFib. What about 24? That's a flutter with slow ventricular response, but it says what? No pulse with this EKG. So that is PEA. But the next one, you could say not VTAC. It'd be V fibrillation. It's fibrillated, just shaking. Okay. And then next one, 26. That's also 
pretty obvious V-fib, right? Or just fibrillating. If you imagine A-fib versus V-fib, they're very similar. This one is the atrial fibrillating, so you'll have normal QRS and T waves, whereas the V-fib, they don't have any kind of QRS or T waves there.